Hello, everyone. Once in a while, a book will come along that I don't think gets enough attention. Even though this book came out in October of 2021, I believe, I hadn't heard about it. <clears throat> I didn't see it mentioned anywhere that, that I was aware of. I'm sure people have. It has a, a few reviews there on Amazon. But it got under my radar. But I discovered it. I think it deserves more love. And I want to tell you all about that right now. All right, so the book we're going to be talking about today is called This Thing Between Us by Gus Morano. And uh, this has a little bit of everything, but there are a couple specific reasons why I liked it so much. The basic premise is that there's a husband and wife, Diego and Vera, and uh, they buy a condo as their first home. And uh, being the uh, technology forward thinking young people they are, they buy a device that's kind of like the Amazon Alexis, that's always on, always listening for your voice, that'll play music, set the alarm, tell you the temperature, look up things for you, you know, that kind of thing. And it soon, be it soon becomes apparent that they believe this device is malfunctioning. But with some of the other things happening in their condo, uh, they begin to get more sinister ideas about what's going on. This thing will turn on at all times of the night, even when they're sleeping, and start speaking to people who aren't there. They feel cold spots in their condo. They hear scratching sounds coming behind the walls. They bring an exterminator in. He can find no trace of any animals, droppings, or anything going on in that condo. Uh, and these things keep adding up and adding up. Well, because... Uh, I should also say that this Alexa-type device also orders things online for them that they didn't order. And it starts out in a, in a kind of a funny way when it orders them a big dildo uh, that neither of them had ordered. But then the things they get sent start to become more sinister, uh, like bags of lie and things of that nature, uh, things that they never ordered uh, and, and never needed. Again, they just think it's malfunctioning, but their suspicions are starting to get raised. But then something uh, tragic happens. Uh, because the device does something that brings about a chain of events that winds up in the death of Vera, the, the wife in the story. And of course, Thiago is, uh, he's devastated. He's forlorn. He's sad, he's grieving, uh, and her death, because of the situation, has caused a political uh, uprising nationwide, and parties on both political spectrums and uh, vloggers and other people are all trying to get a piece of him, trying to use his dead wife for their own purposes and for their own political gain and they all want statements from him he's kind of overwhelmed by all the attention he doesn't want it he makes it absolutely clear he doesn't want it uh, so he decides uh, he wants to move move somewhere remote somewhere with no people he's never been a people person never really uh, cared for any of that although his wife did so he went along with her because he loved her so much uh, but of course he's a grieving man <clears throat> but sometimes the thing that haunts us cannot be escaped from. No matter where you go, no matter how far, uh, if something attaches itself to you, in this case some kind of evil, perhaps demonic entity, uh, they find out that it wasn't just in the condo. He finds out it wasn't just in this Alexa-type device, but it's actually after him. It's attached itself to him. It wants him. Uh, it wants him dead, and uh, it will cause harm to anything around him or anybody around him that he gets close to. And he doesn't know what to do, obviously. <clears throat> he, he's not into all this occult stuff, and so he's, 
he not only is he grieving, but now he's he's extremely fearful for his life. Doesn't know where to turn. Doesn't know what to do. And events happen after he moves that just become more terrifying and more horrifying. And these things are accelerating. They are growing uh, in number largely. Uh, these aren't just one or two little incidences. These are things that are affecting him, affecting his mental health, and uh, trying to ruin him. Because whatever this thing is, it keeps telling him, pull me out. Pull me out. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's, that's pretty unsettling. Um, two things I really, really love about this book, though, is that it fully explores this man's grief over the loss of his wife. <clears throat> and the idea is given to him by this entity. Uh, he sees visions. Uh, maybe they're hallucinations. Maybe they're dreams. That perhaps uh, this entity, through him, unknowingly, brought about the event that led to the death of his wife, making him feel somewhat responsible for her death in the middle of his grief. Um, the wife's mother, uh, who's had a, uh, not exactly a bad relationship with her former son-in-law, but it, but it was strange. She just shows up at his in the new state he's in, at the new place he's living out there all alone, and she becomes involved, and uh, that's where the, the, the book starts to really accelerate in its creepiness and in its terror, and you realize, you know, I see, when I was reading it, I saw no way all these people were going to make it out alive. There's just no way that's going to happen. Um, this is a very, very scary book. It really is. The tension keeps building and building. There are some humorous um, uh, parts in there. But uh, trust me, this is not a comedy horror book or a horror comedy. This is firmly set in the world of horror with just some humorous asides to kind of break up that tension. But the one thing I really like about it, and, and this is something, I mean, it, when you're reading a book, uh, the words matter, obviously. And when somebody can write in a style that is not seen often and isn't really um, uh, maybe popular in this genre of book, I really appreciate it when they can do that because it's different, it feels fresh, and it works for this story. And if authors can do that, I give them all the credit in the world. And this book does this, does that thing perfectly. Uh, because it's, it's written in a first person's perspective from Thiago, from the, from the main uh, protagonist in our story. He's narrating. But it's not written for us, you see. It's not written for other people. This is like a letter, a long letter he is, he is penning, he is writing to his uh, deceased wife. And so phrases, and uh, the whole thing is written as if he's talking to her through this letter. Uh, with phrases such as, do you remember that time that you said this to me? Speaking about his wife, or remember that time we went to this party, or we did this or that. And what really works in this story about that style is that it feels much more intimate. Um, his feelings come through much better, I think, than if it would have been written like in a third person perspective. And you also get, uh, sometimes you feel a little guilty because you get the feeling, you know that this, the things he's, he, this character saying and writing wasn't meant for you or your ears. Um, and so it's like reading somebody's, sneaking peeks of somebody's diary. You know you're not supposed to do it, but you get to a juicy part and you just want to keep reading, right? That's the way, the, that's the way you'll feel throughout this book, like uh, intimate details about their lives, things they've done, things they've experienced. Um, there's also more characters thrown in there as he's recounting the things that led up to her death and the things they experienced in the condo. Uh, Come to find out the person that owned the condo before them was an old lady who was practicing some kind of perhaps black magic. 
And uh, unfortunately, his wife died tragically before they could track this lady down to find out, you know, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> but it wouldn't matter because now this thing is attached. First, it was attached to them. This thing got the woman out of the way, and now it's firmly coming after Thiago, and he has to run, and he has to figure out what to do. He has to uh, deal with, with, with the occult. He has to deal with um, his mother-in-law getting involved, which, as I said before, he's not really a people person and doesn't feel he wants any of that help. But this is just a great book. And like I said, I think it was really underrated. I think it got under a lot of people's radar, maybe because he's not a more well-known author than some. But trust me, this is a great book. I enjoyed it 100%. I was involved in this man's life. I, I, I was sad with him when his wife died because I thought she was going to be a much more uh, integral part of the story going forward. Uh, but it didn't hinder it in any way when she wasn't because this is his story. And like I said, the writing style makes it feel so intimate and uh, like you're listening in on a secret. It's really a great book, and I highly recommend it. It will scare you. It is, I mean, it's about a de demonic entity attaching itself to a person, trying to destroy that person. And uh, well, if that's not horror, I don't know what is. But I will leave a link down below to the Amazon page if you want to purchase it on there. And I will also leave a link down below to my Twitter feed if you want to join me over on the Twitters. I'd love to have you. And as always, thank you for taking a little bit of your time and spending it with me. I really, really appreciate you guys watching. Stay safe, and until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.